Well, hello, everybody. This is Mark Vines, and welcome to The Mark Vines Show. And I want to welcome you to a Friday, and this is August 14th, and, you know, this is Washington, D.C., and you can expect that on Washington, in Washington, D.C., news is always released on Fridays. At least the important news is released on Fridays. And oftentimes, if you're not familiar with how uh, political news is operated, it's done on Fridays so people won't pay attention to the, the news that's, that's put out there. Because today we have pretty big news, but a lot of people aren't going to be talking about it. And, and if you've listened to this show long enough, you know that one of my problems is that we don't pay enough attention to the news in general, at least the right news. And on top of that, we bury it underneath politically driven stories to carry on uh, agendas that various media members who really are political operatives want to push. So that's our job here. Our job here is to uh, inform you of what's going on and point these things out because, as you know, we are 80-plus days out from an election. This is an important election, I think the most important election of my lifetime, And we have some things happening, and it is really an indication of what is happening in our political realm today, and I want to discuss what will happen if we are not very, very careful, because you need to pay attention. You need to wake up. You need to really look at what is going on in this country, because it is not small stuff. And in fact, the the next few uh, iterations of this show, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I'm very concerned about, and I'm going to take you on a journey of history and then juxtaposing that over what is going on today and why it is important. Because you find as you go around, people don't understand history. They don't understand world history. They certainly don't understand American history and then that how that applies today. Because sometimes we think that the issues of the early 20th century could not happen today, and really nothing is further from the truth. And we'll talk about how uh, it can happen. In fact, what I'm going to share with you today is an example of that. Because what we have is some news being released regarding an ex-FBI lawyer. And uh, I just want to share with you this news piece, and this is from NBC News. And uh, this is an article that is written by Pete Williams and Tom Winter. Pete Williams and Tom Winter. And um, here's the article. Let's go through this and discuss it just a a little bit. Um, It says this, Ex-FBI lawyer to plead guilty to falsifying claim made to continue surveillance of key figure in Mueller probe. Okay? So ex-FBI lawyer who was fired is going to plead guilty to falsifying claims made to continued surveillance of key figure in the Mueller probe. So for those of you that think that um, General Flynn needs to be hung from the nearest yard arm, I want you to pay very close attention to to this and what we're talking about today. We're talking about one, one count, and this is something that this guy is pleading guilty to. So it says this, a former FBI lawyer plans to plead guilty to falsifying a claim made to sustain government surveillance on a key figure in former special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation of Russian meddling in the 2016 election, according to court documents. Okay, so this isn't speculation. This is coming from documents that were filed here in D.C. in federal court. It is the first legal development to come from a review of the Mueller team's work, an effort led by John Durham, the U.S. attorney in Connecticut, Attorney General William Barr assigned him more than a year ago to examine the origins of the Russian investigation. A legal filing submitted Friday in federal court in Washington, D.C., said Kevin Kleinsmith, and I, I didn't know him when I was in the FBI, but uh, he, you know, he's a, an FBI, former FBI uh, attorney, but I didn't, I didn't know him at the time. And um, He's going to plead, Kevin Kleinsmith is going to plead guilty to a single charge of making a false statement by, listen to this, altering an email in the course of the investigation. Now, this is, this is a big deal, folks. It really is. And you need to really think about, this is not a small deal. And the press is going to make this sound like it's a small deal. But you're going to have to look at this through your lens. And if this was you being investigated by the FBI, you tell me if this would be a big deal or not. So um, I'm going to continue with the the 
um, article here. So he altered an email in the course of seeking a renewal of a government sa- surveillance of Carter Page, a former Trump campaign advisor. The warrant for approval from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which is the, the FISA court, uh, has been a flashpoint for conservative critics of the FBI in the Mueller investigation. The Justice, Justice Department's Inspector General reported last December that when Kleinsmith was working in the FBI's Office of General Counsel, he altered an email about Page so that it said that he was not a source for another U.S. intelligence agency. Page has publicly said he briefly was a source for the FBI. Now, let, let, me, let me not gloss over that. So what you have here is Carter Page was a source for the CIA, and Kleinsmith in the documents, namely an email discussing this, said that he was not a source for the CIA. So instead of working for the government, the email said that he was not working for the government. So that would justify putting a FISA. Up. So that is that is very, very relevant information. And again, just imagine this being you. Would you be okay with this? Would this be a big deal or not? Kleinsmith told the inspector general he did not consider Page to be a recruited asset. Now, <laughs> only a lawyer can do that. He did not consider Page to be a recruited asset. So maybe Page volunteered. But I, look, folks, I have worked assets my, my entire professional career. And whether they come to you or whether you recruit them is largely irrelevant. OK, um, I, I just love how he put that. You know, may, maybe Carter Page volunteered his services, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, but uh, that's that's just pretty shady in, in my opinion. So. Kevin, and that's going to be Kleinsmith, um, Kevin deeply regrets having altered the email, so he admits to it, he said his lawyer, Jonathan, Jonathan Schur. It was never his intent to mislead the court or his colleagues. Well, then then what wasn't his intent? That's the question I have. So if that wasn't your intent, then what was your intent, Mr. Kleinsmith? As he believed the information he relayed was accurate, but Kevin understands what he did was wrong and accepts responsibility. So if it was accurate, then what are you sorry for? This is just a bunch of crap, folks. It really is. And you got to pay attention to this stuff. Barr, and that's going to be Attorney General William Barr, foreshadowed the expected plea agreement in an interview with Fox News on Thursday evening. He said it uh, it was not an earth-shattering development, so it means there's going to be other things coming. That's my, my surmise. But would be indication that things are moving along at the proper pace, as dictated by the facts in this investigation. President Donald Trump remarked on on the news at a White House news conference Friday calling Kleinsmith a corrupt FBI attorney who falsified FISA warrants in James Comey's corrupt FBI. Now, what's not true about that? Now, you can say, well, that's just a political statement, but okay, but what isn't what isn't true about it? That's true. So he goes on to say, that's just the beginning. I would imagine because what happened should never happen again, Trump said, and he's absolutely right about that. He is pleading guilty. It's a terrible thing. The fact is, they spied on my campaign and they got caught. You will be hearing more. And, you know, Trump is absolutely correct about that. They were spying on his campaign. And we have never seen anything like that. And unless this country wants to be a third world, you know, third rate country in the future, a police state, we cannot have our premier law enforcement agency engaged in this kind of conduct. And I want you people to understand that had Hillary won the election, ask yourself this, if Hillary had won this election, would we even know that this happened? Would we? I don't think we would. So just keep that in mind as we move forward in this. And as this thing pans out, and it develops even more because, guys, this is just the beginning of, of, the, of Durham's investigation. So it goes on to say the inspector general's report concluded that the FBI had a legitimate reason for opening an investigation into the Russian election meddling and whether anyone contacted uh, the Trump came, uh, connected with the Trump campaign was involved. The report concluded that there was no proof of political bias in the decision. Um, that's actually not true. If you read the report, what it actually said was that the bias was so rampant that 
he could not, meaning Horowitz, could not determine specific individuals and specific decisions because it was so rampant he couldn't sort it out. That's actually what the report says. So this is this is pretty misleading. Uh, but Inspector General Michael Horowitz said the FBI made serious uh, and repeated mistakes in seeking an order under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to conduct surveillance of Page. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a way to twist it. The FBI's submissions to the court made assertions that were inaccurate, incomplete, or unsupported by appropriate documentation, he said. Now, folks, that's pretty damn serious. If this is you, and this is you working in a campaign, doing what you're legally allowed to do, exercising your First Amendment protected free speech, that's a pretty big deal when you have, quote, inaccurate, incomplete, or unsupported by appropriate documentation, information that goes into a warrant where people are surveilling you. Guys, that is a big deal. Please do not allow that to just roll on and like like it's not a big deal because it is a big deal. So Barr said he asked Durham to look into the origins of the investigation because he did not believe the FBI had a proper reason for launching it. He told NBC News last December that the FBI started looking at the campaign on the thinnest of suspicions and kept pushing even after it went nowhere. And that's a big thing in the FBI. And you know, we, we would start lots of investigations on, on people. But the fact is, if you had exculpatory information or information that, that proved that the person you were looking at did not, in fact, commit the crime that you're investigating, you stop the investigation. You don't keep, in other words, you don't look at somebody and say, okay, all right, I get it. Maybe he did, he or she did not commit that crime. But I know that they're committing a crime. So I'm just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until I find something because I know they're a bad person. Folks, that is not how the system works. That is not how we want the system to work, but that's exactly what was happening here. And we do not want that in this country. I'm telling you, we do not want that. So this is a big deal. So then it says, there has to be some basis before we use these very potent powers in our core First Amendment activity. And here, I felt this was flimsy, he said. And that's Bill Barr. And he is absolutely correct in that. Absolutely correct. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you here is, this is a big deal. And thank God Donald Trump was elected. And thank God he fired James Comey. Thank God he got rid of Andy McCabe and Peter Stroke and Lisa Page and the others to include this guy, Klein Smith, and got rid of them. You know, as a former FBI agent, I am ashamed of these people. I am disgusted by these people. And I absolutely think that uh, it was a cleaning of a house that needed to happen. Uh, I personally believe that there's a much bigger and broader cleansing of the FBI that needs to happen, and it needs to be public. And I do not personally see the reputation of that organization that I spent a big chunk of my life in repairing itself until that happens. And if when you look around and you see what's going on in this country and you see who is being elected uh, or who, who is being um, put forth as the candidates in the Democrat Party, and you look at those folks and understand that Joe Biden was a part of this whole process and that this whole process was turned on American citizens who were not breaking laws, then you are going to have a really, really tough time ever correcting that ship. I'm telling you, this is a big deal. It is something that cannot be glossed over, and it is something that needs to be prevented from happening because we would have never, ever known that this abuse was occurring had the, the election gone the other way back in 2016. And so we're going to be talking about this more in, in the coming weeks. Again, I want to thank you for joining me here today. Check out my Facebook page. Please give me a like, give me a follow, give me some comments, and I will be seeing you soon. And this is Mark Vines, and I am out. <laughs>